right, everybody. So our final topic here today is going to be our spoiler review. That is, this is your spoiler warning. We're going to talk spoilers for Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1. So check back after you watch it. If you don't care about spoilers, then obviously feel free to listen on. So let's get into it here, guys. I just want to, I know, Rick, you're a huge Star Wars fan, so you have a lot to say about uh <laughs> I got some words. This, you're very happy that Mandalorian is back. Oh, yeah. I think we're all very happy Mandalorian is back. We all love Mandalorian. So. Yeah, who does? So, let's, uh, it's my first quick overall thoughts of the episode. I'm just going to say, like, I liked it. I thought it was good. It, I thought it was great. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Very um, entertaining. There were, there wasn't really anything I didn't really, like, dislike from it. The only thing, I just right off the top, I'll get into the one thing that I was, like, right off the bat kind of like rolled my eyes about is that they went back to Tatooine. Yeah. Because like I said like... before, that episode on Tatooine was my, it was the worst. It's not, I'm not going to say it was my least favorite. It was the worst episode of season one. Like it was just the worst <laughs> one. Like, yeah. Like hands down the, 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 the characters that were involved on Tatooine, I didn't care for, especially the little kid one, the gunslinger kid, like, I hated that character. It was terrible. Like, no offense to the guy, but it was terrible. Like, and then I didn't really care for the the mechanic lady either. She's just so out of place for Star Wars, I feel like. It just... I feel like bit, when yeah. she's on screen, because she, she makes a return in, in this episode. That's I, feel, I did feel kind of the same way. It feels like her. once she comes on screen, you're watching a Star Wars skit on Saturday Night Live. It really does. It feels forced. Yeah, it just it seems so out of place. Not that like I don't hate him. I she was she was better in this one than the other one. Yeah, I could one hundred percent do without her. Yeah, I could do without the character altogether. Yeah. Like I, I honestly would just rather her not be. It just because it doesn't feel like Star Wars when she's on screen. I thought about that while I was watching that last night. I was like. Mm-hmm. Like, but luckily, she doesn't have a lot of screen time or anything. So no, but I mean, even her dialogue, the way, the way, even like down to the way her lines are delivered in it, it just doesn't feel like Star Wars so, at all. Yeah. And then the only other thing I had with, uh, kind of in that same opening scene, with the uh, the little droids, like the scene where they were talking and they were in the background and they were like messing with the pipe. Yeah. Looks super fake. Well, the one thing like, I was going to say too so fake. about that scene, R5, the red and white droid, they like zoomed in on his head and you could see where he had exploded at one time or something like that. There was like this blackness. Is that the same droid that, you know, Luke blew and, up on with Luke? Yeah, like it may they're all about those Easter eggs. It may, it may very well been. Look, what, good, speaking good of catch. Easter eggs, I think that's right. my favorite part, and I, this is going to be jumping forward in time a little bit, for at least for the episode was uh the marshal when they get to the scene where they're on the speeder bikes the dopest thing was when he came rolling on screen and like I, i'm assuming you guys noticed that his speeder bike was a pod racer engine it looked exactly like bike. anakin's pod racer yeah it was literally a, and i thought a that monster. was like super cool yeah just like yep. a super nice little because it's not like they lingered on her it was just like he comes rolling up on a speeder bike and it's like if you know what it is you're just like holy shit yeah, that's what i was like yeah. i was like this that's a racer engine like that's one little so- complaint about the speeder bike scenes though when they're riding on them together and talking to each other they're just casually talking like this on these loud ass machines flying yeah. through the desert at like how many miles per hour i thought the same thing because they were just sitting there it like, was casually very just conversating yeah it was very green screen sitting in a car like talking and like i mean even they're they're moving cool these- if they had like headsets on or something so they yeah. you know they for they were talk- it, it's it's which is an easy enough thing to do like they just throw a helmet on or something, a riding helmet or whatever. Yeah. Be an easy enough thing to pull off and make it add, add some, add some um, realism to it that, that yeah, you lose. Have them yell it. back and forth. Like, you know, not just like, talking yell, like at this yeah. yeah, put a little yeah. bit more effort into it to show that like they're moving on the speeder bikes. Yeah. They, they were just, it was just casually here. Like, like, and they didn't even have any sort of like wobbling to it either. Like, no, it was just like, perfectly smooth. yeah, like this is great. And like, how you doing, Mando? You yeah, know, like, and they're talking like this loud when he's like, well, think about it. Like, away. if they're riding motorcycles on the highway next to each other, even if you were screaming at each other, you couldn't hear it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't no, know. I'm with you. I, I thought the same thing. I'll Nitpicking. Kind of like, there were a couple scenes in it too, like going back to where 
like I'm not like uh, just trying to like shit on it because overall I liked I liked everything in it. Like I just like there's, I'm just getting into the negatives first because most of the negatives are out of the way. We talk about the cool stuff. Um, there were a couple of scenes I was looking at though where like I don't think the CGI was super strong. I agree. Like there were some where it looked good, and then the other ones I'm sitting there just like look lower budget. Yeah, it's like I'm like I, and I get that it doesn't have to always be perfect, but like at the same time. I don't feel like I really thought about it as much as I did in this episode during last season, like at all. Like, I don't know. Maybe it just stuck out to me for whatever reason on this one. I don't know what it was, but I just noticed that. Um, I did like, though, that one thing that I was kind of worried they might do was just because Baby Yoda just popped off and is like so amazing. Everyone loves Baby Yoda. I was worried that they were just going to like shove Baby Yoda down everyone's face and give Baby Yoda just all the screen time. They really like, didn't. And they didn't at all. Like he, he was. It's still sort of a background. It was, yeah, it was the Mandalorian show. Of it, yeah, yeah. And so that's that's one thing that, like, uh, obviously, like, I'm really like happy that they they stuck with. And uh, I mean, right from the opening shot, though, like, it just shows. It was just super in tone with Mandalorian, and it, it you know, in, in keeping with that Western tone, just him walking into the city and like starting this thing, and the, very Western. Yeah, the Gamorrean uh, fight club or whatever down there, like that was cool. Like I, another little nitpick I do have. Speaking of which, though, is that they they keep having all these aliens speaking English all the time. Perfect English. Yeah, per, no, they don't even have accents. Like like that dude he's talking to is like a cyclops. He's got one <laughs> eye. And he's he just sounds like I do. Just like, hey man, how you doing, Mando? Like yeah, it's not like even like a cool accent. Mando's out here later in the episode Boys. speaking Tuscan. <laughs> and I've, always, I've always played that off though as. In this galaxy, while, while, while it's English that we're hearing, there's probably some universal or galaxy known tongue that, that most most species have adopted. In they can't, though, own. because some ain't like the Tuscan Raiders are in here speaking their own language. Like, it, like they, they constantly disprove that themselves all the time well, by having not, some not, aliens speak alien dialect. Sure, sure. But those but those species are are. They are so entrenched in their own, uh, you know, their own culture that they don't adopt. It's kind of like, you point. know, it's. It, 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 I, I hate to say it because it's it's the, it. the most American thing to say, but it's almost the way that English has become the unofficial language of business over over the globe. I mean, most global companies have many people that speak English for some degree. Mm -hmm. um, even though you know their culture, you know Japanese culture, they may speak Japanese most of the time, and and then there, but but many business people that are Japanese also speak English because it's become almost the, and that's kind of the way I I, I anticipate. You're, you're right though; it would be nice to throw an accent in here or there, or throw more captions up, but. You know, just, the, the ones that don't. They could do it just how, like, a lot of, like, movies, like, are they do it. If, if, like, the character goes over to Russia, they do the first lines in Russia, like, in Russian. And then they, like, they just ease in, like, speaking to, like, American dialect. You know, Ameri you know like, American they, English, English yeah. dialect. But, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, start it off with that and then say, do you speak common tongue? And like, yeah, should we continue? Like, I don't know, they don't have to do it every single time. And it's it's just a stupid little nitpick. But it's like the opening scene in the season one was the same way. You have this like blue alien dude just talking like, hey, man, what's up? Like, <laughs> yeah. like and then this dude's sitting here with uh, it's a cyclops, like literally. literally a dude. And it's like, he's just talking normal. And it's like, he doesn't even have any sort of like. Sounds it, like your uncle or something. Yeah, like. it's. it's <laughs> He's literally an alien there, the, so they're insinuating his vocal cords are literally constructed the exact same way as a human. That's a good exists. way to look at it. And you it's like, it's not. That. He would sound different in some way, even if he could speak a language. There's that no would way actually, he just sounds like this. Like That would be awesome if they started messing around with the with the uh, audio mixes on these things. If they, if they digitally adjusted the actor's lines or voices to... To give them a more alien feel, yeah, just um, that would be awesome. Like, be but I think do. you know, I, I think it's hard to. I'm sure it's difficult to come up with a a, a language for oh, an alien for species, sure, yeah. and and for them to do it for a lot of them, I think would be hard. But that would be very cool. Like I, I am totally 
you're, you're turning me around on this whole thing. I think they do yeah. need to have the sound mixers go in and start digitally messing with the it. The only thing is, too. though, with that, sorry, I didn't mean to like cut you. No, no, you're good. Like, if they do that, Star Wars, as you know, they like reuse a lot of the same species. Like, you'll see like the same species later on in the episode or in a different movie and whatnot. They have to have somebody or some way of basically like, that's what this species sounds like. You know, and I mean, they do that with a lot of them, but like with these like English speaking characters and stuff, if you ever see them again and they have a different voice, you have to have somebody that's like this. Is how they say. I was like, if they just you, did like a voice modulation thing for some of them, like, you know, how yeah. Ben Affleck's Batman, just that he electronically made his voice deeper. You know what I mean? If they just applied a certain uh, distortion to the Cyclops voices, then you can, you could have one that has a Boston accent, but then you have that weird could, distortion into it or like, it's like some weird tick that they like they do specifically if if you don't like, want to develop a whole new language look at ray sure she speaks with like an, a british accent like straight up finn is actually a british guy he speaks with like an american accent it's like where did these languages come from is there like a planet of british people like that's my point yeah sir alec guinness was his name we are getting him. deep into this but <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they did the same thing with Obi-Wan and Luke. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? But anyway, that's just, that, that, obviously that does not make or break the show. No. <laughs> it's just, when I see him on there, then he just starts talking like this. I'm just like, it kind of just takes you out of it a little bit. Like, for just a brief second, I was like, you don't expect him just to start talking like this. Like, and like, no, like, grunts or anything was like, to, to kind of indicate that, like, they're different in some way, other than just how he looks. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's just weird. But uh, what did you guys think about Timothy Oliphant's uh, the Marshall character, though? I thought it was good. Love, loved him. I, I'm a huge Justified fan. I love that series, and to see him come and basically play that role, play Rayland in space, was just oh, so good. Yeah. Yeah, he was definitely like the Marshall Western, like, I run this town kind of thing, you know, and he did that well. Oh, absolutely. What did, what did you think about the the whole uh, the whole armor? There was one thing that we kind of, we got some more, like, look into, like, Mandalorian lore as opposed to, like, how it kind of, like, works in the show because with uh, his character wearing the armor and everything. Yeah. Because our, our Mando was just like, armor off dude. yeah like take that off like, yeah. take it off it's like you can't wear those colors around here man like, yeah <laughs> yeah which i thought i mean that was kind of cool because we you it, it, one thing too that they do in this show is really great and i i don't know if i've said like on here but i know i've said it before in some way but like they i've done a very good job of conveying emotion through a oh, yeah. helmet like, I don't know how they do it, but like, because as soon as Timothy Oliphant's character sits down and removes his helmet, you saw that it like visibly disturbed Mando, like immediately, yeah. just with his, just his, just the way his, his head entire was body everything. language is just, yeah. yeah. And like, it's, they, he, they, he's an incredible actor to be able to pull. It's, you know, it's the Bane performance from The Dark Knight Rises where he's got his entire face covered. And he still pulls off a menacing, you know, figure. Yeah, um, it's crazy. Not, not to not to take everything back to Batman, which I I, I try and do, but but no, <laughs> there 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 are some roles that, when done right, are just exceptionally well done. When you don't have a way to emote, a way to express what you're feeling through your fruit through your face, it's just amazing to me that people can pull that off in such yeah. a great way. No, it's crazy, and that that does stuck out to me because like they did. Like even with like like tender moments with like if he's looking at Baby Yoda or trying to do something like somehow this was the way the the way they get them angles in his body language like he all you always are on the same page with him which is just crazy when you mm -hmm. like actually break it down because like you can't see his so eyes subtle. yeah you can't see his eyes you can't see his mouth you don't know what the hell's going on and like I don't know they just do that really well yeah um what, what did you guys think about uh, the the snake monster thing. Oh, the crate dragon? The crate dragon. Crate yeah. dragon. It's a yeah. lot bigger than I thought it would be because yeah. they never really talked about size wise. Because that noise that Obi Wan makes in A New Hope to scare off the sand people, that's like the crate dragon call. And then I didn't really hear that. It's a weird noise that they use too. Like it's really strange. Mm -hmm. It was big. I, I mean, I, I thought I thought it looked awesome. I, the yeah. special effects with that were 
superb in my opinion. Um, yeah. To be fair, there I don't think there was any point in the show last or the show when I watched it that I was taken out by the special effects. But I'm pretty, um, I, I'm I'm pretty gullible. I'll, I'll go along. <laughs> I mean, even some old you know '70s special effects still, I'm, I I go along with. They don't pull me out of it when it doesn't look right. But um, but the crate dragon looked awesome. I was hoping we get a shot of it completely above yeah. ground, like that, that it was going to. It, completely uh, what's the opposite of submerge itself it was going to completely come expose. out of the ground and expose itself and see we'd see it at some point which we didn't really get but um we got some really cool shots of it coming just a the giant top of worm the, yeah the top of the mountain and the yeah but it was very cool i think that it's like they almost used their entire special effects budget on that yeah that's what i was going to say it's like i think they uh just blew the load on all the dragon <laughs> scenes like the only thing I will say to too, this isn't really like a nitpick or anything, but uh, it was this the over the overall story of the episode was very familiar in the sense that it was the same concept of the season one episode with uh, him and Carrie. Sanctuary, doing, yeah, Sanctuary with uh, where they fight the ATST. Like, like there's this thing these, terrorizing these people. Yeah, we gotta like, kill it. Yeah, they gotta go get the people and unite them and take it down. And like, doesn't it, really. It's more of like a a quest versus like anything to actually do with the real story. Yeah. And I'm show. cool with that. Like, like there's little it, things that yeah. kind of go off and branch off. Yeah, I mean, it's but it's the same. It's, it was like the same thing. Like it was the same. And it, what it, it was different, but the same. Like in some ways. But I'm fine with like the show being that. Like I'm I'm cool with the show being essentially like a guy just like doing his thing, like doing a side quest here and there, like in a video game, like just, yeah, you know, that's he's what just me of. yeah, he's just doing his thing. No, it's just like the familiarity was a little, it was kind of on the nose in some ways. Like it was just literally the same thing in a different setting in some ways. Um, which is just kind of like, I mean, maybe I'm just looking too much into it at that point, but it was just like, I liked it and anything and everything, but, I don't know. Uh, what I thought it was funny as well that uh, like uh, obviously this was supposed to be Boba Fett's armor, and and that uh, Timothy Oliphant was wearing. He said uh, that he had bought it off some Jawas, so that that brings up some some speculatory uh, dialogue we could have here. Is uh, uh we were kind of talking about this off camera too. Is like how do you think? Because we had the reveal it. at the end, where uh, Timur Mortensen sitting there presumably as boba fett and uh, if on imdb he is credited as boba fett now in that episode so if imdb is correct on that then that was 100 percent in order boba fett so with his armor though like i said timothy oliphant's character the marshal said he bought it off some job was so do you think that perhaps the crate dragon killed the sarlacc beast that so he was able to escape, and then maybe that's how he survived the Sarlacc pit. Good idea. I mean, maybe you and think then, he just like he's not a Mandalorian, so he doesn't have that attachment to the armor. Like, right? You know, Boba Fett Mandal is not a Mandalorian. He's not by. He's not technically. I don't think. I was reading about this the other day. Neither, neither is Jango Fett. They basically, maybe Jango Fett is, but like, there's something where they basically just like adopted the armor. Is what they well, I guess that's like. that would be that would make a lot of sense because Boba was Django's payment for his his role in the Clone Wars, right? Yeah, they so, were like, here. Here's a kid. So that would make sense that maybe Boba didn't have the Django the Fett Creed is a Mandalorian. Whatever. Is he? Yeah. Well, but it's like Before he doesn't get this Google search. He doesn't have that same attachment to his armor, like. The Mandalorian has, you know, where it's like helmet doesn't come off or anything. Well, like Django, that's just, true. Django did take his helmet off. Didn't he? Yeah, yeah, because that's the thing. That's what I was saying. With uh, we we still really don't know what like their whole tree is up. There. Like this Mandalorian, be different tribes of Mandalorians. Yeah, we don't like, really know the whole story on because even in like Star Wars Rebels, you have Mandal like tons of Mandalorians on Mandalore take their helmets off. Oh yeah, but, yeah. like almost all of them do. But for whatever reason, this. Our Mandalorian guy, Din Djarin's like crew of Mandos, they they don't take it off for whatever reason. We don't really know why yet. Is this the way? Like, obviously. yeah, I guess. But 
Um, it, it maybe it just has something to do with them being a, adopted into it. Like maybe the like the because you know he was a foundling. Maybe necess- Maybe he wasn't like born on Mandalore in that capacity. So like anybody who's a foundling and adopted into Mandalore, or the, at least this Mandalorian Cree, they're not allowed to take the helmet off. I don't know. Yeah. Like that's still something Probably. that hasn't really been answered in a lot of ways because, like I said, Django took his helmet off all the time. Like it's tons of other Mandalorians like, on screen and animated shows take their helmets off all the time. So I don't know about the helmet thing. Like, mm-hmm. But uh, if if Boba survived the Sarlacc pit in some way, I could also see because like the, we've been also been referred to like in the show, it's been teased that there was some like kind of cataclysmic event that happened either on Mandalore or something happened that the purge. I yeah, think the, they referred to. Yeah. yeah, like so, like there's the Mandal- Mandalorians have been dispersed throughout the galaxy and like separated and divided in some way, so. He could have gotten rid of the armor, sold it to the Jawas to lay low. Because you got to think, he got eaten in... Boba got eaten by the Sarlacc last we saw him. Got beat by Blind Han Solo. Yeah, thanks to Blind Han Solo. Yeah. So he got beat. He's in the Sarlacc pit. Somehow he gets out of the Sarlacc pit. And like at this time, like the Empire has essentially fallen. He was a mercenary, bounty hunter, whatever you want to call him, who worked for the Empire... And like that was last we saw him, he was working for Vader. So and uh, and the Huts to some degree, I guess too. So yeah, but they're all working for the Empire. So at this point in time, the Empire has fallen, and it probably would behoove him to get rid of that armor. And especially if he's in a place now where like maybe he was severely wounded after that too, and could he would pretty out. messed up. Yeah, he had scars on his face at the end of the episode and everything. He so, looked like. Freddy Krueger almost like it was yeah so I mean I could see him like wanting to lay low and just literally sold off his armor to the Jawas just to like kind of get by because like he wasn't going to do that anymore he looked anyway. like a scavenger like, too yeah like, he had like a gaffy stick like the sand people mm-hmm. stick hanging off his back and yeah so then he had like a long rifle that uh I think Mando had in season one yeah or the disintegration rifle he uses yeah. yeah. Um. So I, I'm. All, I I think all those are completely viable scenarios. I'm curious if whatever it took to survive the Scarlet Pit, if he didn't come out of it injured in some way, and the Jawas found him and assumed he was dead and scavenged his armor off of him. And that's how they came into possession of it. And then he wasn't quite dead and somebody else found him and nursed him back to health or, or he came to after having gotten out of the Sarlacc pit, the Jawas had come by and scavenged his body and left him for dead. And he somehow came to without his armor and has been, you know, forced to kind of build himself up from scratch. Right. Well, that's the thing. Like how, I guess do do we know how long it's been since the, those events at this point? In time? Uh, based on the official timeline that we were talking about off screen, uh, I believe Return of the Jedi is four years after the Battle of Yavin, and the uh, Mandalorian show is set ten years after the Battle of Yavin. So you're talking about a six year time gap between um, Return of the Jedi when he goes into the Sarlacc pit, and then now. So, yeah. and maybe, maybe four, you're talking about six, maybe five. If you take the past, if you take the beginning of the Mandalorian. So like if the, if the season one of the Mandalorian is a year long time, maybe that time is even more condensed. Well, I guess we, we don't know how long he was in that pit for. Yeah. yeah he could have just burst. Like they could say he just shot his way right out of there. Yeah. Like no problem. I mean, like, he had a jet pack. Yeah. So, I mean. Or Phoenix, whatever they call it. Who knows? I don't know. I would imagine there, there like, was a version of how he got out. In there the, is in the old universe, right before Disney bought it. Like he was, shot himself out. He, he shot. Yeah, yeah. I, but but I think when Disney bought it, they took all that EU extended universe stuff and said it it wasn't canon anymore. So I think it's kind of still up in the air as to how he officially yeah, find out. Yeah, I guess. Oh, oh. Yeah, we might find out. Because I imagine that's the thing. As obviously, I don't think this is going to be the last time we see Boba Fett because 
I mean, we we only got one little tease of him at the end. And the whole point of, like, it was kind of set up, at least for this episode, was uh, him being in search for a Mandalorian to, like, kind of help further guide him. And, like, they kind of set it up to where, like, inevitably, that's the one he's going to find, being Boba Fett. I don't think it's going to work out how he thinks it would. It could. I don't know. It's so, probably been well, a long time since Boba's seen another Mandalorian too, so he might actually be kind of like, like bruh. Yeah, like, what's up? But <laughs> Boba Boba being so tied to Django and Django being so tied to the Empire and the rise of the Empire and and all the stuff, all the machinations that uh Palpatine was doing behind the scenes, that would be a great way to explain how of all the Mandalorians to find, Boba you think would be the one that maybe had the best chance at knowing where Yoda's race comes from, where baby Yo belongs, who, who to take him back to, or at least have the keys that Mando needs to find that out. So the connections, I, 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 like, yeah. I like the tie in to, to that history and that character's um, backstory as far as where, where they're going with this story. He definitely would be someone who'd be able to, he knows about Jedi. I mean, he mm-hmm. was there. And he's seen his, them. Yeah. He's seen them in his Sith and yeah. Like he saw his dad's head get cut off, so by a Jedi, by yeah. a Jedi. Yeah. So I mean, he's They're not just sorcerers thank, to him. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Mace Windu. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, <laughs> it definitely would make a because I mean, Mandalorian or our Mando it referred to them as enemy sorcerers. Yeah. So Boba would be someone who would probably like reinforce that statement. Like, yeah, yeah. they they killed his. They cut my dad's head off. Not, He's gonna get a to, against him. Not to go off on a tangent here, but we're talking about. So we were this this Star Wars timeline is it bugs me when we come up with stuff, against stuff like this because the Jedi are referred to as these kind of mystical unknown. Oh, like, I know. Like we don't even know who who Jedi are, but yet the time the official timeline for Star Wars has the Jedi Empire and the in the Council of Jedi. They were they've only been they were only taken out by the Empire like 30 years previously. Jedi were all over the star system, all over the galaxy. Uh they were the guardians of the galaxy for, for millennia, and they were only taken out 30 years ago, and yet the Mandalorians don't know who they are. Common people don't know who Jedi are. There's not like a they, history of them. Or... That's something that's very, always bothered me with the show. Very odd, yeah. very odd uh tack. They're very odd story element that they're they're playing out with this the, the jedi being these mystical kind of unknown beings when, yeah, like a myth when, almost yeah yeah they they make them out to be some weird like myth mythological creatures that like no one's ever seen but like yeah with, with how they were all set up in the prequels even like how does everybody not know who they are like there's like, tons of them there's a whole Pro- army over. of them the the republic went to them for counsel like literally there was the Jedi council and they like well, literally and they led, counseled the Republic. They led all the forces in the clone wars. They were, yeah. you know, it's just like the deep state of the Republic. Right? Yeah. And there's been like, <laughs> like they're, they're, I guess they, they said at one point, like, and I think in Canon and some, in some form, like when Sidious became, you know, the emperor and all this stuff, like he, he went and like tried to remove, um, all sorts of like Jedi texts and like try to erase them from that. That's been their Good point. That's been their canon for how no one knows who they are is like he went and, but it's still, there's still people alive who experienced all that. Like, yeah, so like sure. it's, the, the fact that someone like Jin Jaren's age, for instance, who isn't that much younger than Boba Fett, like in all it's reality, be in his like late thirties. Yeah. At and most. Boba Fett's yeah. like 41, 42, like, he wasn't he was like he was alive for all that he would have seen it all happen like not one other know? person has told him like there's these guys with like yeah. light swords and like, <laughs> yeah it's it doesn't, it doesn't make, make any sense because if the empire only lasted 23 years based on canon right the yeah. canon timeline if Jin Jaren is like 30 years old he lived at a time when there was no empire yeah which kind of throws that whole timeline uh, through a, a loop because the when he was a little kid, he was saved by the other Mandalorians, like presumably because the Empire was invading. So he would have had to have been, if he's like 30, he would have had to have been, I guess, oh, I guess maybe he was seven then. 
seven or eight. I guess he was like young, and I guess it was young enough to where maybe that would work out. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But like, he would definitely know. I feel he would have to know what's going on with these. Like same with like everybody else who's live there. It's always Bob. I'll, I mean, I'm more, I, I, I don't think about it that much when I'm actually watching the show, so it doesn't bug me. It doesn't. When we, yeah, talk, when we start talking about these specifics and he raises these points, and it just then it's like, wait a minute, this yeah. come on now, guys. But but I, yeah. I'll I'll go with them. I'll go with them. Maybe the Jedi weren't as well Probably. known as as, yeah. as we are. Maybe maybe it's a, a recency bias, or, or because we're following the story of the Jedi, they we, they seem more well known than they actually were. Who knows? Well, no, because I mean, when Luke Luke gets the lightsaber from uh, Obi Wan and everything, and he's like, "Well, you fought in the Clone Wars," like people knew like about Wars, everything yeah. that happened, and like when we saw the Clone Wars, everyone knew about Jedi, like because it's like yeah. the whole Jedi Council was there and led the Republic Army and everything. So like, it like you can't just wipe that out from people's <laughs> minds, like. I'm sorry, like they did, they effed that stuff up. Like they did. The, the whole them just not knowing what Jedi are. Like, I mean, maybe you blame it on the prequels for introducing too many Jedi. They because when it was just like, they could have at one point been like some mystical thing that maybe there's only a few of them, but like, it is already established that there was a whole army of Jedi. Like, we, we saw oh. them. Like, so yeah, that's definitely something that's always bothered me. I'm right there with you. Where do you think? Uh, where do you th- you think uh, this is the last time uh, we'll see the marshal? Though, you think he's gonna make another appearance later on? Oh yeah! Before I forget, to another person who would be good with that because a nice we got Ahsoka Tano making an appearance at some point. She's yeah. gonna be in one episode in this. So with Boba being able to bring in, they're both gonna have very different opinions and be able to give Mando very different information on you know these enemy sorcerers. You know, it's like. Yeah, I think Boba Fett's looking at the Jedi as like people, and maybe he's not you an killed idiot. My dad. And, yeah, like maybe he's not <laughs> an idiot though, and understands like, well, the Empire really was a bunch of like scummy dirtbag people, and like you know, cause maybe he's a little bit self aware that like the things that he was doing wasn't always good stuff. You know? Oh yeah, I'm sure he's like to it. some degree. So maybe he 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 would be there to like not. I don't know. I just I think it'd be kind of like a disservice to the character to have him just be like, yeah, the Jedi are bad, bunch of shitheads, like, you know, whatever. He's had a lot of time to think. Yeah. And like, like, he was there. Like, yeah, Jedi killed his dad, but it's like, you grew up with like Darth Vader and all this stuff and became a bounty hunter and you, you can't sit here and say that like the Jedi were the bad guys. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like that's kind of, a, it makes the character seem kind of stupid if they went that route. It's like, I don't know what they're going to do with that, but Obviously, he is going to have a very different interpretation of the Jedi and everything over Ahsoka Tano, over Ahsoka Tano which could like lead to some interesting things. So, and I, and I don't think it's going to be the last time uh, we we see the Marshal, but like, I don't know where else he would fit in. So it could know. be in season three, for all we know. Like, it, well, they they clearly like revisiting Tatooine, so yeah. Yeah. you know, and and who knows he may he may have to go off planet at some point too for some reason so there are, there are lots of characters the the prisoners that were left behind after in season 1 there are lots of characters that they've you know scattered throughout this series so far that i'm sure will have a spot later on if they need them yeah and another thing too i was kind of shocked uh, cuz you were mentioning this uh off camera a little bit no not even uh a sentence or reference at all to um Moth Gus Frank. Gideon. Yeah, Moth Moth Gideon. Gideon and the Dark Saber. Yeah. Like they just picked up on a new quest line for Mando and like they weren't even talking about that stuff or doing anything. Which I thought yeah. was kind of interesting that I you yeah, think I figured... he even mentioned just like I'm running from this guy at this point. Like yeah. or if they would have had a scene dead, like Oh yeah he does. He does. True. He, he does. When his he took his tie down at the end of season one, I don't think they expected him to be coming back from that. Right. Yes, yeah, so I don't think they know anything about the dark saber or anything like that. But I was more or less surprised that they didn't have like any sort of scene for for us, the viewer, like showing that, sure. showing more of that. Yeah. You know, like, where, what anyway. is what is he doing now? Because that because that was clearly established as the 
kind of the 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 behind the scenes in well he's not he wasn't even behind the scenes but that was clearly set up as the that's that's the person that's after that's going to be chasing him as during this mm-hmm. journey to get baby yo back to where he belongs um and so yeah to not even reference him or show him was was a little strange yeah oh, i'm with you that was that was I, I mean i guess it's fine though we'll learn more about it but it was yeah it was, I, it was surprising because this was like an hour-long episode too yeah it was. and like they didn't have anything referencing it at all well like like i to- like i was telling you when we were talking about off camera i you know Star Wars has has this thing about like making you wait just a little bit longer for 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 what you really want to see. And you know, I came back to to the the Force Awakens, wait, just waiting, 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 waiting for Luke Skywalker to show up. And he shows up at the end of the movie, just turn around and look at the camera, and that's it. I had to wait another, yeah. you know, two years, three years for the for the Last Jedi to get Luke Skywalker see him actually in action and then you it's still kind of, didn't get him and yeah. you still didn't I don't want to talk about i'm still one. waiting uh, yeah I, yeah i don't really but I'm this saying. this felt like the same thing like oh I, i'm waiting for you know moff gideon i'm waiting for the dark saber let's see where they go with all this and then you get the first episode it's like yeah you're gonna wait a little bit more so, which is yeah. why not, i it's i think it's a good idea they haven't marketed ahsoka tano because yep. she's only going to be in one episode, I know. And if they would have showed her in a trailer, like, that's all anybody... Because there's a ton of people who are big fans of that character and everything. And, like, that's all anybody would be waiting for. Yeah. Like, but... Well, eventually, he runs into what? Sabine Wren? Well, no, I think I read, too, that her character, who we assumed were going to be playing Sabine Wren, because she was uh, the WWE actress, I can't remember who, most people were speculating that she was going to be Sabine Wren. And apparently it was confirmed that she's not playing. So, I don't know. Because people just assumed it was because Sabine's a girl character and where Rebels left off, Sabine and uh, Ahsoka, like, they know each other. So it's like, oh, that's probably what they're going to do. Like, it made sense. But I guess uh, that might not be the case. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see, though. Like, I have no idea. So... Because uh, that's another character that would actually be good for Mando to run into because she would be able to bring a whole other light of uh, a, a different take on Mandalorians. Yeah, than, definitely. Than he's ever seen. Like, really. So, I don't know. I'm definitely, I'm definitely excited to see where they go. They are definitely, they're subverting expectations at, at, at most of the turns for me. I mean, like, I would have expected as popular as Gina Carano's character was that that she would be, you know, kind of a, a main player. That it would be her. She they would have teamed her up with Mando to return him, so that she would be on every episode. And they, they and they're playing it kind of sparingly with her, and and the same with Carl Weathers' character. They're playing it sparingly with him, and you know, Ahsoka Kata, Ahsoka Tano. They're going to keep, you know, kind of in the background. And I think it's I think it serves the story well. I think you could really lose the story to the other. And and so uh, I can't say that word. Um, the other character, ancillary characters. Thank you. Um, I think you could lose the story to them, like you could to Baby Yoda, and, and they're doing an excellent job of for keeping it on Mando and the story of this the, yeah. this main character. Yeah, that's what uh, I guess I was. Uh, I was worried about them like losing sight of that, like mm-hmm. especially when we find out, oh, they're gonna bring in Ahsoka Tano, and they're doing this, and then Baby Yoda's all big now. And they're so yeah. they're gonna give Baby Yoda all this. Like, this, I was glad they didn't. Yeah, I'm glad. I I hope they are consistent with that. He's because. almost kind of co- comedic relief in a way. Like whenever you see him, it's just like, oh, look at that funny little thing he's doing in the background. You know, oh, yeah, my he is, favorite. Absolutely. My favorites, my favorite part of the whole episode, and they they spoiled it in the trailer for for the series um, for season two, but it still got me when they did it. Is when uh, he gets he has all the guns trained on him in the in the fight oh, club yeah. there, and and he he powers up the uh, I can't remember what they're whistling called, birds. Darts. The whistling birds, thank yeah, you. Yeah, whatever. Powers yeah. up the whistling, and Baby Yo just reaches over the side. Yeah, he's just like he yeah. taps it <laughs> closed. And, yeah. Yep, that's that's good. Such a that good scene. Good. It's, and then there was another one when they when right after that, like during the fight, he just stands up and then kicks him, like kicks the cradle thing kicks, back yeah, out of the way. Like, out I of thought way. that was good because that was one thing too. Like they look, it, it looks like he's not as like I don't know, like tender with him. Like he knows that Baby Yoda, 
can keep his own. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's yeah. seen what he can do. He's not like, treating it like a newborn baby. Yeah. Like, and it's, which is cool because like, he obviously can handle himself to some degree. So it's like, he's like save their ass. Yeah. He's not just like holding him like constantly the whole time. Like, you know, just like stay away. Like, he's just like, you want to mess with the kid? That's fine. He's going to fuck you up. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, he may be a baby, but like he knows yeah. what he's doing. Yeah. Or she, like he, could he's, be she. He saved him like twice now, the fire and then with the the mud horn. The mud horn. Like yeah. yep. he's showcased he's got some skills, like for sure. So he's definitely not coddling him. But anymore. absolutely adorable at the same time. Oh yeah. <laughs> Still protect him at all costs because he's too goddamn adorable. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> that was also uh, cool. I guess uh, the last thing that I really have uh that just popped into my head that I can really think of was uh I liked that right after that scene with uh, the Cyclops guy, like they just reiterated the fact that like Mando is not someone you want to mess with either because he hangs him up on that pole and he's walking away and he shoots out the light. But you, like he didn't kill him, but such a cool scene that they right. set up that they set up early in the episode. I didn't even pick up on that when they were walking through the light was what was keeping the creatures at bay as they're walking into town or whatever. And they're walking underneath all those lamps. And that's what you can see all the eyes in the background. And you're like, Oh wow, there's some creepy characters, some creepy creatures back there. Yeah. And, and, and it wasn't until that final shot when he shoots the light out, you're like, Oh, so, so it's not, it's not more than that. They are there. They, they can't go hand. into the light. And that, right. That was so cool. Yeah. Which is just, again, shows that Mando ain't someone to mess with. Like he's yeah. still like, he'll kill you. He's a mercenary. He's ruthless. So yeah. He's a bounty hunter. Don't get in his way. Like, so that I was think cool. we find out slowly though that we got a heart of gold. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, he definitely does. I mean, that's kind of like the whole Mandalorian thing though. There's these like they're a bunch of like hard ass dudes, but like don't mess with their family. You know what I mean? Because yeah. at this point now, little dude, little yo, he's he's his crew man. It's his little dude now. The squad. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's his dad. It's it's that is the way. He's yeah. the, he's the, the, the armor to the armor told him, you know, until you get him back to his people or until he comes of age, you're his father. And so, yep. his responsibility. Yeah. I have a feeling it's gonna be a while until he comes of age. Yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do timeline wise with his 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 youth and his aging. So I don't know. Yeah. Still looking out for that. Is there anything else you guys stuck out to you guys? Negative, positive, or anything? We're ready for uh, episode two. Me too. Yeah. Do we know? Do we know how long this season is? Is it eight episodes again, or did they, did they expand this one? I don't know. If they Hopefully, it's more confirmed. I can look it up real quick. But, but I, I hope it is. And I hope it is on the same. Like I, I like. I don't. I like what they're doing with the stories. I don't want it to. I want them to keep these stories tight and well told. I don't want them to try and. Just expand it just for the sake of expanding it and have the stories become eight. I don't know. Is it eight again? Yep. Okay, good. December 18th is the last episode. Okay. So. I, I, I like I like that they, they expanded the the runtime of the shows a little bit more. We're getting more towards that hour mark than the I half heard hour that mark. it was, like was just minutes. this one. I don't, is I, don't it? Know if, I I heard that like this for whatever reason. I don't know if it's hundred percent true, but it was like promoted somewhere that like Mandalorian returns with like a one hour special episode. I can see that. So I don't know if like just this one is, or if maybe they'll all be a little bit long. Cause I really enjoyed it being a little bit longer. Now, some of the other ones, man, it was just, they were real quick. Blink it's like and you it's blink. Over. Yeah, exactly. You blink. It's, it's like watching an anime show. Like once you get rid of the cart, or the cartoons, once you get rid of the commercials, you're looking at like 20 minutes of content. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, it, that 20 minutes goes by quick. Like when yeah. you're watching something that has like a lot of like action and drama, it's just like, it's over before you kind of like Quibi and how it failed. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's the same concept. Like, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they're sticking to eight. I do hope that they're like, you know, I thought, you know, 45 minutes is good. I'm good with, if they can keep it 45 minutes, I'm good with that. Sure. So. I'm really curious. I'm curious where they go with this season because obviously you've got the questions about Moff Gideon and the Dark Saber. They're out there in the periphery waiting to be addressed. Now you've introduced Boba Fett. Um, we know Ahsoka is coming into the show at some point. So they're they're throwing a lot more balls in the air, 
and I'm not mm-hmm. sure how they're going to juggle them all. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, you know, obviously we want to see Gina Carano and Carl Weathers character back at some point. So I'm really curious how they're where they're going to take this all. Um, they've done an excellent job so far, so far. So I have complete faith that they'll, that it'll continue it. But um, I'm also fine. Just the slow burn, keeping, keeping these episodes, these seasons to eight episodes and, you know, have it, have it run for a few years here. Yeah. Oh yeah. I definitely, I, I hope they uh, definitely find ways to, cause to, to introduce some, cause this is obviously star Wars. Like it's, this could go on for like ever, you know, cause star Wars is like always going to be beloved and popular. So as long as the show is good and people are watching consistently, I don't think it's really going to go anywhere anytime soon. So, I mean, I, I hope that uh, in some ways they, they, they maybe weave in some, like some things that could lead to some future, like bigger stories, you know what I mean? Because like right now, like we said, like a lot of the episodes are just like these individual side quests that kind of like he he does and like goes on, and like we got kind of like teased and were presented with the big meat of the story uh, at the end of season one was you know going to be the Moff Gideon stuff more so than anything. But we still we don't really we've had like one and a half episodes with Moff Gideon. We don't really know what what their whole thing is like so the only two like kind of main plot lines we really have at this point is moth gideon stuff and then baby yoda so i don't know Uh, that that feels like something that you would have to wrap up relatively quickly or it's just going to be dragged out for like kind of too long like sure so i I don't want it to get you don't want you want people to lose interest and be like okay you're you're just never going to address it then yeah so i hope they i hope they just keep moving that stuff i don't want them to like Every every season ends with like, oh, we didn't make it, and then the next season is yeah. just like picking up the same story and just, they're just dragged out over. And like, I, I yeah, want them that to could get old kind of quick. Yeah, I want them well, to bring it to a good conclusion, move on to something else. Was your was your big meat comment a veiled reference to the uh, crate dragon and the sand people harvesting the meat from the <laughs> from the crate dragon? That egg thing they pull out or whatever. Yeah. They pulled out that yeah, you said the big meat of the episode was Oh no, it was not <laughs> that was the big no, meat. That that was the big meat. And he of drives the away, episode. it looks like he's got a giant filet mignon yeah. he's putting on the back of a speeder bike and covers yeah. it with a blanket. Yeah. <laughs> it literally looked like a giant filet mignon. Yeah. No, but oh man, they 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 were gonna eat well, I guess, that night. Um yeah. hey, uh what okay, so here's something I've been kind of in the back of my own head debating. Which who's the uh, who's the more popular Mandalorian now in the Star Wars lore? Is it is it Boba Fett who was for years, or is it now Din Djarin? Is it, is it has the Mando replaced That's the Boba Mando, as right. as the Mandalorian for the Star Wars saga or universe? It's the or is or is or is the Dark Horse Jango the the winner? I, I wouldn't put Jango in the same ballpark, but I would say the Dark Horse would be like Sabine Wren. Because okay. like, there's a lot of people who like Sabine Wren. I think Sabine Wren as a character has been a lot. She's had a, she's had more to do though. I'll give her that. She's been around a little bit longer than Jen. I like as far as aesthetically, the Mandalorian Jin Jaren looks way cooler than Boba Fett. Yeah, does. Boba Fett's kind of like ratchet. Yeah, like and Boba Fett. I've said time and time again, he was the most overrated character in Star Wars ever. Like Jin Jaren's showing like that he's he actually. Was, Huh? He's showing that he's like actually pretty badass. Maybe. Yo, Jin, yeah. Yeah, Jin. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Boba Fett was like, he, he didn't had really no live up screen to the time. Hype. He got beat by a blind guy. He just looked, people liked him because he was the only Mandalorian they'd ever seen. Like, his armor looked cool. That's why and people he had liked him. Jetpack and like, yeah. yeah, he, and, and, you know, he had the whole, he was, he was the one that, that caught, caught them he was the one that was responsible for them being caught on cloud city he tracked them to cloud city you know made the deal to uh get han and bring vader in and get hand over luke and leia so right. yeah yeah but he never really did much like you, we've seen our mandalorian guy do a lot more stuff you know, yeah Jin Jaren. so like I, I think he's probably like in my opinion he's a cooler character than both oh, yes yeah. like at least at this point in time and he has yeah, the was, added benefit of having Baby Yoda by his side. So. Exactly. Well, yeah, right there he's got he's got that bump that uh I, I I was just I was surprised because when I when I thought about that question myself the other day when I was 
doing my rewatch, I thought, God, I, I think I like, I like our Mandalorian more than I like, I like Din Djarin more than I like Boba Fett. If you had told my 10 year old self that there'd one day be another Mandalorian that I liked better, I would have been like, you're crazy. Yeah. Boba Fett's, right. Boba Fett's the man. Boba Fett's awesome. Nobody's ever going to be cooler than Boba Fett. And right. Here we are. Let's say, I, I, I was never like on a, on a big fan of Boba Fett just because like he never saw him. He just never did anything. Like people hyped him up. But he was, it was, it's he was, a look. He was mysterious and he had a, such a cool look and that jetpack was oh, so agree. cool. And, yeah, yeah, and, and he wasn't, you know, he was, yeah, he was just a cool, like you didn't know anything about him. You didn't see his face. All, all the mystery about him made him yeah. cooler, I think, than maybe the, the reality of him was. Yeah, the mystique of him was definitely like what yes, made him cool. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's why, like, I think now, at least where we are now without knowing what he's been up to in these last six years, our, our our guy's just done more stuff and like he's i feel yeah. like as a viewer he's definitely showcased more talent like rick was saying like he's just been he's a cooler dude as of right now boba fett too mysterious you never know and he got beat by a blind guy and i'll never let him live that down <laughs> knocked over yeah yeah never never gonna let him live that down and i'm sorry too but it always i'll tell you what uh just before we wrap it up the uh, thing that always bummed me out about Boba Fett was when you found out he was just a clone too. Like, yeah, he wasn't that crazy. Like, that really either. lowered down how like because cool, you lost the mystique at that point because you were always wondering like what's he look like under there? What's you know this? And then and then you find out in the Clone Wars and you're just like, it like yeah, he's just that he's just that kid. Yeah, just, that's it. Like yeah. that always kind of like. I don't know, that kind of ruined it for me in a lot of ways, too. Like, it just, it just kind of, it opened the veil, right? The mystique was lifted, and you're just like, oh, it's just, yeah, just a little kid. But, but that about covers it. But to be, fair, to be fair, that all that led to this series. So, in the long run, it was all worth it, I think. Well, I mean, they, I think the fact that he what, became as popular as a character that he is led to. Just the more Mandalorian lore coming up because they've done yeah. a lot of cool shit with Mandalorians. Like Darth Maul had the whole Mandalore thing where he took over Mandalore and like was ruling over it, and like all that shit's cool. They like, get the lore with a dark saber, like all that stuff came way after Boba Fett, and then Boba yeah. Fett wasn't as cool as he was. And, like they would have never expanded that lore out. So you gotta give him credit for that, I guess. So, but I don't know. I give credit to uh, costume designers. Than anything, I guess, so, <laughs> on yeah. that at that point. So, did you guys got anything else you want to add? No, I think, I'm I think we covered it. All right, looking forward to episode two. Yeah, sure. are, we, episode are we are we going to get a teaser trailer for two? Was there a teaser at the end? I didn't stick around through the credits. Is there a teaser out there for episode two? I don't know. I didn't. I feel I didn't like look. I thought there was, but I don't really know. Okay, I'll have to look that uh, up maybe after. I'll have to look it up, but we'll probably because I thought. I thought last season they were doing teaser trailers at the end of the episodes, but maybe I'm misremembering that. I don't remember. It's been a while. It's been like a year. Yeah. I don't remember True. seeing it at the end. I don't remember seeing one. I don't think about it. Okay. But anyways, that's uh that'll do it for us guys. That was our spoiler review or spoiler discussion of Mandalorian season two, episode one. We're all on the same page. We all loved it. And we're all looking forward to seeing more. Obviously uh, don't forget uh, well, actually, before that, we'll probably will just do uh, spoiler reviews at the end of each week's episodes, uh, you know, ongoing until whatever the last date was for December 18th. We'll probably keep doing these. Uh, assuming they're good, we'll keep going. Like, cause, I mean, I don't know. I bet there'll probably be more that we could talk about if there's a really bad episode at the same time. So I don't know. We'll see. But we're definitely going to keep doing these uh, spoiler discussions with Mandalorian Season 2. Mm -hmm.